Hey everyone, Artosis here, bringing you some more of the BSL 15 Asian Championships. Here we are in group number C with the winner match. We have Bus, our Terran player in the top left, going against Fengji, our Zerg player in the bottom center. Uh, this, well, I mean, I, I gotta say, I do think Fengji is going to be favored here in the group overall and maybe one of the more favored players in the tournament. Definitely a very, very strong uh, Zerg player that has shown uh, a lot of great games in the past and already looked pretty good so far in this group, taking down uh, Rain. Uh, Bus, on the other hand, was able to block Xuan Xuan uh, from advancing. It was kind of messy, though, right? A couple of very cheesy double barracks proxies from his cheesy opponent and then, like, a very messy last game. Uh, so I don't really have strong opinions on Bus yet as to exactly how good he is, you know, uh... I mean, stuff ju can just kind of look a little bit weird when there's so much cheesing going on. So yeah, I don't want to don't want to overly judge, but I would say that I'm guessing that Fengji should be strong enough to take him out. Now, our map is Longinus 2. We talked about this in some previous games already. A much older map, but actually, I have a lot of fond memories of Terran vs. on this map, both playing it and watching it at the pro level uh, from back when it was really quite famous. In fact. Uh, during the reign of Savior, this map was was quite popular. Uh, so just to kind of put that that time narrative, I guess, upon it. Uh, it. It gives some interesting games, right? Because you have the regular, you know, well, I mean, it's flat, like I've I've mentioned, right? This is there's no raised ground. The raised ground is all in the center, kind of like uh, Largo right now. Uh, and then you have raised ground bases. This is a three player map, by the way. The other main base is right over here. But you have a raised base here, a raised base here, and a raised base here, right? So 12 bases total. And the raised bases have double gases. So the Zerg securing that gets you that four gas economy. Uh, so yeah, that's that's going to be something that makes it a little bit interesting, right? Like if Zerg can get that and hold on to that, which shouldn't be too hard with a couple of lurkers, uh, they do get that little boost as far as economy goes. Now... All that being said, let's take a look at these builds. Looks very standard from Fengji. Gonna start mining that gas. Yep, looks like he's just going for a standard two hatchery play, but we have a quick factory here from Bus. Throws down that second depot. And in fact, this is a factory before the second depot. That's not something that I'm too used to seeing. Uh, you will be like supply blocked here for just a little bit, but not that long. Um, Anyways, I mean, it, it looks like he's probably going to go mech. It could end up being a 1-1-1 one, one, one build. But actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I remember mech was even somewhat popular here on Longinus 2, even though mech uh, wasn't maybe as powerful or as used back in those days. Not that it's super uh, popular right now, but definitely the Chinese Terrans seem to like it. You, you can see it from Korean pros. You can see it from the top non-Koreans as well. It's definitely something that gets mixed in which I think is a, a good way to look at it. But let's see what Bus is going to end up doing. He's going to go ahead, throw down a command center over here, getting ready to expand. Completely, completely safe. I'm actually a little bit surprised he didn't just make it on location, considering he has an SCB down here. Uh, you just kind of know that your opponent is not going to be able to harass, and it's a little bit quicker that way. But anyways, throws that down. The first vulture is out. Of course, we already have that sunken colony finishing here for Fengji, so... No real chance of getting that in. It's a little bit far back. So the Vulture, if like this Ling is actually really well placed. Uh, if the Vulture comes here, hold positions, kills the Ling, and then runs in, it will get in past the Sunken. So this, okay, he throws down the Hydral Sten. So that actually blocks it completely. The Vulture cannot get past here without dying. Things like this are actually extremely important. You have to know exactly how much damage it's gonna take as it's trying to go past. You see, he is trying to get something done. Ooh! Oh, ho, ho, ho. I love it. He pulled the Ling up to tank that one shot so he didn't lose the drone. Very, very well done. And look at that. This is so cute, actually. The SCD being saved by the Vulture. Of course, Vultures with their concussive damage. Literally never going to kill this Hydralis again. You go to Hive before you get that. Uh, now, looking back at the main base, we have an engineering bay. We have the armory. That's actually an extremely fast engineering bay. I'm, re I'm really surprised to see that that quickly. Huh. Normally, you would start the set like five minutes. Uh, and now we're at five minutes. It's like halfway done. 
So very, very quick there. We have the Goliath range on the way. We'll see if he gets armor or attack. I would imagine he's going to go for attack, but uh, if you want to go all in with the Goliath build, a lot of times armor is better to go first with. Uh, and, you know, actually, people ask sometimes about it when I mention things like this. So basically, uh, the armor gives you more tankiness with the Goliaths. Uh, the, the plus one on the attack doesn't do as much. Like, if you're doing a move out right and they have Mutalisks, the plus one armor takes an additional two damage off of the mutant instead of one, whereas the additional attack doesn't do all that much. Uh, and also, you're not rushing up to two one upgrades. Like, the second attack upgrade is much better than the second armor upgrade. Uh, but when you're doing it all in, you don't get this science facility. So it, it just tends to work better. Is Your final push has plus one attack, but your initial push out has that plus one armor. Either way, uh, no actual upgrade yet. So that's kind of surprising. Normally you would have seen that by now. Uh, but he's making plenty of turrets, has these Goliaths out, looking very strong defensively, and there it is, the attack upgrade. So again, it doesn't say 100% he's not going for uh, an all-in type attack, but it definitely opens the possibility for him to uh, go ahead and, you know, uh, go up into, like, 2-1 and, and get a huge, massive mech armor. Now, there are a few Hydras walking out, but no third base yet here for Fengji. Um, a bunker is already up, and he's making Marines. There's actually a lot of tourists. I'm surprised, by the way, that Bus is playing this, honestly. Um, normally, when you go for the Goliath build, because they have such superior range, you make two turrets here. You make, like, one turret here and, like, maybe two, one to two turrets here. So he has at least two extra turrets more than you will normally see at high levels uh, with the Goliath build. But, I mean, here's the funny thing, right? Like, if those two turrets save you three SCVs, they paid for themselves. So, yeah. Not going to complain too much about it, but maybe not fully optimized. Because Mita's not really able to do anything here. Ooh, Lurker's on the way. Now, the Lurker shouldn't be able to do too much. The Bunker is here. Uh, they do outrange a bunker. If he pushes very slowly, he can bust this bunker, but you can't get too far because there is a turret placed here. So this turret will be helpful and kind of prevent the lurkers from doing too much damage. Uh, and with two turrets here, you can't actually dive on the turret either because you won't be able to kill both before you lose everything. All right, so he runs up, burrows here, and obviously you can just lift that right up. Th and Bus actually throws down... And an engineering bay. That was just a little bit of a block to make sure he couldn't get all the way in. Cancels that right away. Throws down another turret just in case. And academy on the way. Uh, drone getting ready for this additional base with the double gas, like I mentioned. He's are 2,500, so together they are like a full geyser. But you're mining twice as quick, right? So that's, that's kind of the big difference there. Now, fourth factory coming up. Honestly, I'm not a fan of this position for Fengji. He's actually rather drone low. He went like five mutas into four lurkers. He's not heavy on drones. He's going to hive quickly. The only thing I can think with hive is that he wants to go into defiler because uh, dark swarm and one lurker is invincible. It's literally stronger than dark swarm and two lurkers because uh, if you have two lurkers, Sometimes the splash damage from a tank can hit one, depending on their placement. Like, for instance, you throw a Dark Storm over those two, and, well, they move, so I can't really explain it perfectly. But, like, if there's a second Lurker here, and there's a Dark Storm over them, and you attack this Lurker, the splash will kill this one. But just one, you literally cannot hit. So, I think this is the idea. Oh, God, he's actually just adding Mutas now. Very different, different play here from our Chinese Zerg. All right, fifth factory coming up. Second add-on is on the way as well. We do not see a starport. So no science facility or anything like that. This might mean that Bus really does want to go all in. Like normally, uh, like with this many Goliaths, with five factories going up and no starport, that does point towards a two base all in. Maybe he can hit that in time. We'll see. Now these lurkers have burrowed out of sight, I believe. Let's just take a quick look. Yes, so they're out of sight of that barracks. So if they're on hold position, he doesn't know where they are. Okay, well, this one's not in hold position, so now he knows. He can just walk up, scan, and gun some of these down. Bus might actually have enough to make some real damage. 
Yeah, these ones not on hold position either. Quite a few mutas though going towards that main base. Let's see what they can get done. The Lurker is going to run away. Goliath starting to move out, but the Muta is moving into the main. Goliath's turning around now. Kind of a tough position here for Bus. Uh, hemming and hawing a little bit, right? Like, now he's turned around half of his army, the other half kind of walking out into the map. And the Goliaths will be able to push this away, but some damage was dealt. Feng Ji right now catching up as far as that worker count goes. Right, a lot of Goliaths being made. So this is, in fact, a two-base all-in. And he never actually started plus one armor, by the way. Uh, which, I mean, it's fine. It's whatever. But uh, this is... I don't think this will end well for Bus, honestly. Uh, so he never teched up additionally. He's just going for a massive attack on two bases. And, I mean, consume is almost done. And again, as soon as you... Like, if he puts one Lurker down, Dark Swarms it, and just feeds that forever... Like, you're not getting any better there, Esbus. It's not... Your, your position is not really improving. So, I think Fengji is pretty good here. Consume is done. Scans. Sees these lurkers. Gonna start to punch through them. Needs to move forward very quickly to knock these out. Okay, Dark Storm goes down. You cannot kill these. These are invincible until uh, Dark Storm is gone or you try to unburrow them and move. Okay, so a lot of tanks siege up. Nine queens on the way. Oh, my God. Nine queens. So he's going to be going into broodling play here. Actually, a little bit surprised uh, to see it that quick. Normally, you go queens quite a bit later. Wow. Yeah. No, I... I'm... I'm I mean, this is why I really enjoy to cast the... Uh, the Chinese players in the BSL because they just play so differently. Like, this is just not something you would normally see from a high-level player. Now, queens can be very good, okay? They are actually one of the best things that you can do uh, against mech, but normally you don't get them this quickly. Like, if you have uh, the defilers out, normally you'll you'll kind of slow everything down because it's going to take a long time for these to be ready to broodling. After a queen pops out, it takes two minutes to get enough energy for a single broodling. So that is a bit of an issue. Now, a ton of turrets are being made. Seems like this is just a containment, but again, a lot of ground units like Ling Lurker with Dark Swarms, he could potentially break through this position. Now, it looks like Bus getting ready to expand. It is a little bit late. He's gone up to three add-ons here. Finally going into the science facility as well, building a turret over on this third base location. So it looks like he does want to expand. Goliath's trying to push forward a little bit, but Dark Swarm, once again... I mean, you can contain them all day. This location looks very solid as well. Goliath's going to be able to push these few mutas out of that third base. All right, so he will be getting his income uh, expanded quite a bit. That's very good to see. Bringing tanks over here, but, you know, this is not very breakable either. Uh, missing a few shots there, but... Let's take a look. He actually does hide that Defiler through the Nidus and does not throw any Dark Swarms down. I'm, a, again, a little bit surprised. Okay, a Dark Swarm goes down. Making some more Lurkers here as well. Bengji tried to sneak another base over here. I actually wasn't even paying attention to this because it's not really easy for him to get anything up when he's this contained. Uh, where... Oh, God, guys. I missed the Queens in action. I'm so sorry. Oh, no. Oh, wait. No, I didn't. <laughs> it was too zoomed out. I couldn't see with the minimap. I'm like, how did that happen? Uh, okay, anyways, we have the Mutas coming over and <laughs> trying to break through. Obviously, they are not going to be able to get anything done here. Oh, the Queens! Okay, we got one. One, one Broodling goes down. These ones getting ready as well. We are going to watch it. We're going to catch it. And you can see the cost efficiency are absolutely amazing. Look, as soon as the queen does a broodling, it is paid for itself, and you are happy. Uh, and, of course, all of them can fly away, and most of them will get a second one off. Pretty quick unit as well. Okay, another broodling goes down. 
Seed Shank Count really being dug into. We do have that third base up with double gas coming up as well. Right, some excellent broodlings. Almost every single Seed Shank on. Now, does he have a ground army that can come out and battle at this point? That's a big question. Okay, every Siege Shank out here has been taken out now. No Dark Swarm. The Goliath's still able to fight a little bit. More tanks moving down. Kind of a, a funny position here. Like, the Queens have done all right. The Dark Swarms have done all right. Trying to attack uphill. A couple of Siege Shanks do siege up and there are quite a few mines here okay play goes down the goliaths not bad pulls back for now with these hydralisks mines being laid all over the place as well these gases a little over halfway gone so that could become an issue for fengji if he stays trapped in this area you know i think it, the the crucial thing is to break out of the container he's tried to do it with queens but that was very slow and of course once the queens Use their 150 energy. It's three minutes until another one. Uh, until another, you know, uh, broodling to, to kill another siege tank. So it's a very slow way to push out. I do feel like if he just macroed heavily here, he could probably push out. I mean, at this point, going up this hill, it's a little bit rough. That is a bit tough. By the way, EMP is on the way, which is a great move against queens. I actually really like moves like that since they do clump up quite a bit when they're trying to do broodling. Now, a Dark Storm goes down, and he gets a couple, but it's not really doing that much. In fact, no vision there, so it doesn't even get the extra volleys off. Now, Hydra's trying to move towards the center of the map. Queen's starting to get back to that energy level where they can cast some more broodlings. Looks like we have five, and I saw about four more. So I think we're going to have about nine tanks picked off here momentarily. Doesn't quite have it yet. Sometimes it's worthwhile to throw a, a parasite down somewhere in the middle if your opponent doesn't really realize. Uh, so you can actually see to clone those queens off more quickly. Now these Hydras trying to come in for a little side attack here. And, oh, they're going to try to go up into this third base location. But the flank is here. The Goliaths on top of the ramp doing an absolutely fantastic job. Hydras, for a moment, they are targeting the science vessel, realizing they weren't going to get it, get picked off. And Bus really has control. Like, look at that supply differential. Fengji having a hard time pushing through anything. All right, we did see a Parasite go down. Ah, there it is. Actually, that's funny, because you can't drag click here and see which one it is like you can if you're actually playing. Uh, but yeah, there it is, the one tank with a Parasite on it. You can Restoration that. I don't think he's going to bother. Uh, but comes up a lot of Lurkers burrowing here. He actually gets reasonable damage onto some of the tanks and throws down that Dark Storm, so now invincible. Yeah, can't stay there and fight. You will end up losing your entire army. And you can see that splash damage bounced off the egg here and ended up hitting that lurker. The hitbox is just really kind of funny on burrowed units, basically is why this is the case. Now, there are more queens. Okay, he has popped out a few more here as well. Did pick off a few siege tanks, I think, while we were watching this battle over here. This one's ready as well. More tanks. Look at the supply differential. It's like 60-something supply advantage here for bus really looks to be in a, a quite a dominating position look at that another parasite i don't think you really need to see at this point it's like this is just so deadly this massive massive thing kind of a funny way to play it just so many seed shanks have been fielded it's like how do you how do you ever break out of here against these this high ground position right you have two ramps and as long as bus kind of covers both of them with seed shanks and then it's like, yeah, you get you get some broodlings off, but he is picking off a reasonable amount of queens during this. Very different way. No attempts to actually kill Fengji. Just trying to choke him out here. Now, there is a new base for Fengji. If he can get a Nidus up over here and get some Lurker Defiler, there's a possibility he can start to take more of the map. But Bus has taken yet another base here, yet another base here. His economy getting absolutely out of control. He's maxed. And I think he's going to be maxed for a very long time going forward. 
All right, the science vessel has scouted this base. Parasited tank going over there. Looks like he's unseaged a little bit, maybe to send as well. Okay, well, <laughs> the defiler uh, just covering the single lurker. Cutting through as much as it can. The attack coming up. Yeah, there is a Nidus on the way, but I think he's probably going to be able to kill everything off before that can be saved. Turret's going up as well. Kind of a brilliant little contain here. I'm actually... It's like it looks really weird, and it... Yeah, like... I mean, you're letting your opponent gain some value because you're not, like, actively hunting everything. Like, queens are getting shots off, but he's done such a good jo job utilizing the terrain here. There's just not that much room for Fengji to get through. So, yeah, I mean, I would never advise someone to play like this, but for this map in this situation, it seems like Bus has really given Fengji such a problem with this containment that there's nothing left to him. Look, he's got, like, an okay army, but it's just so outmatched by what Bus has. All right, the queens are coming. Let's see what he can get done here. Broodlings going to start popping all over the place. Great! Broodlings go down. Dark Swarm as well. Does he have enough to actually break out of this right side of the containment? Bias picking off quite a bit there as well. Oh, another Dark Storm goes down. So this area looks like it will, in fact, be broken. And Radiate goes down here. This area, very, very healthy. Could send some units over to help out a little bit. Maybe move that Siege Contain back ever so slightly. But Fengxi needs to do a lot more than what he's done here. He needs to not only break out here, but also probably take some more bases and continue to hold part of the high ground. Now the, the killing blow, I think, is exactly what we're watching here from Bus. Look at that bank as well. Staying max out the entire time. A very... Oh, going to, he's a mass rape as well. <laughs> I don't know how serious he is about that. But anyways, it looks like this is straight up a victory. GG, well played. Bus takes game one.